Hi, in this video we are going to discuss the experimental physiology graphs. So this can be asked at an OSPI station wherein you will have to draw the graph as well as answer a few questions related to it. Okay. So before moving on to the graphs proper, we will first just see how these experiments are done. So we know that these experiments are done on uh, the nerve muscle preparation of a frog. We dissect the sciatic nerve and the gastrocnemius muscle and we and we make an isolated nerve muscle preparation and then we'll mount it on a frog board and connect it to a lever so that when we stimulate the nerve the muscle will contract and that contraction will be transmitted to the lever which will in turn record onto this chymograph okay so how do we stimulate the nerve see for that we've got special electrical connections we need to have low voltage induced current for stimulating the nerve so that when we stimulate it via this electrode that that impulse will be transmitted to this muscle and the muscle will contract and in turn we will get that recording on this chymograph okay so this is the basic setup for almost all the skeletal muscle experiments of frog right so the first experiment here is simple muscle twitch so to draw the graph you have to first draw the baseline and then you have to draw the simple muscle curve and mark the points like point of stimulation, the point of contraction, then the point of maximum contraction and then point of relaxation. Now one thing that you have to remember when we draw the simple muscle curve is that we should also draw the time tracer. So see here we've got these small waves, the wavelength of which is 0.01 seconds. Okay. So we are drawing the time tracer to, to actually know the duration of each phase. So here we can see that the latent period, which is the time between the point of stimulation to point of contraction, that is 0 0.01 seconds because only one wave is there in that period. Next is the contraction phase in which that is the distance between the point of contraction to point of maximum contraction. In that we can see that there are four waves here, which means the, point, the contraction period is 0 0.04 seconds. Now the relaxation phase here consists of five waves, one, two, three, four, and five, which means the relaxation period is 0 0.05 seconds. Okay, so you should have all these markings on your graph. So the points to remember are first you have to draw the latent period, and then you have to draw the sleep steep contraction phase, and then you have this relaxation phase. So why is contraction phase more steeper than relaxation phase? See that is because the lever has got an inertia because of which the lever will take time to come down. That is why the relaxation phase is more and the slope is less steeper. Okay. So contraction phase is more st steeper. It has it a uh, greater slope. The uh, phase is less when compared to the relaxation phase. And after that, we've got what is known as the after curves or shatter waves. That is because of this momentum of the lever. Okay. So latent phase, contraction phase, relaxation phase and after curves or shatter waves right so the, these are the points you have to remember in simple muscle curve now the questions that can be asked in simple muscle curve are compare isotonic and isometric contraction so when such a question is asked you can uh, draw a tabular column showing the differences so isotonic is the type of contraction in which there is change in length of the muscle whereas isometric is a type of contraction in which there is change in tension of the muscle right in this there is no change in tension that is why it is called isotonic iso means same and tone means tonic means tone so that is that is why it is called there is no change in tension whereas isometric means iso means uh, same and metric indicates length so there is no change in length external work is done in case of isotonic contraction and there is no external work done in isometric Examples are contraction of leg muscle while walking and an example for isometric are maintenance of posture against gravity. Okay, so these are the differences between isotonic and isometric contraction. So the other questions that can be asked for simple muscle twitch are what are the causes of the latent period? So we know that here we've got a nerve and a muscle and obviously we've got a nerve muscle junction in between. So here we are stimulating the nerve, right? So suppose this is a nerve fiber and we are stimulating this nerve fiber here what happens is the impulse must first travel through this nerve right and then it has to reach the uh, neuromuscular junction the there should be release of vesicles and then spread of impulses 
through the muscle membrane right so these are the causes for this latent period that is the time taken for the generation of the impulse then time taken for the impulse to travel along the nerve fiber then the neuromuscular delay then the time taken for the impulse to spread along the muscle now one more factor is the mechanical inertia of the lever so these are the five causes of latent period next we should also know the factors that influence the latent period so here you can see that the position of the electrode is one major factor which determine the latent period so suppose the electrode is nearer the latent period will be less but if the electrode is further away the latent period will be more right so one is the position of the electrode second one is the temperature the increase in temperature will shorten the latent period another one is ph an increase in ph will increase the latent period fatigue is another cause for increased latent period and another one another factor is application of load if there is a load that will also increase latent period so these are the four factors which increases which or changes the latent period next we should know the factors that affects the contraction period the two important factors that affect the contraction period are fatigue so see if there is a fatigue if there is fatigue for the muscle that it increases the contraction period and also temperature temperature decreases the an increase in temperature decreases the contraction period okay next question that can be asked is factors affecting relaxation period so here it is just the opposite of that of contraction period fatigue increases relaxation period and an increase in temperature shortens the relaxation period so for both contraction period and relaxation period remember these two points that is fatigue and temperature right so that is about simple muscle twitch so the next experiment is effect of two successive stimuli on muscle contraction so the questions for this experiment will be like draw the effect of the second stimulus applied during contraction period of simple muscle twitch or draw the effect of the second stimulus applied during latent period of the simple muscle twitch or draw the effect of the second stimulus applied during relaxation period of a simple muscle twitch whatever be the question you have to first remember that you have to first draw the simple muscle curve only then we can compare the result that we've got okay so first you have to draw the simple muscle curve mark all the markings like point of stimulation point of contraction point of maximum contraction and point of relaxation and mark the different periods and now we'll see what happens when the second stimulus is applied during the different phases okay so the first one is a beneficial effect now beneficial effect occurs when the second stimulus is applied after the complete relaxation of the first one so see here this one is the first stimulus and after the complete relaxation of the first one we are applying the second stimulus so here is the point of stimulation of the second one so you can see that we will get a much taller and broader graph now this is known as beneficial effect right because the second stimulus is much bigger than the first one see the reasons for this beneficial effect are an increased temperature increased elasticity decreased viscosity decreased ph and accumulation of calcium all because of this previous contraction okay so you should know what is of what are the causes of beneficial effect next if we are we when we draw it we should also remember to mark all these points you have to mark the point of first stimulus mark point of second uh, point of contraction of the first stimulus mark point of maximum contraction of the first and so on so the diagram should be la well labeled showing both the points of first stimulus as well as the second stimulus okay so now we'll see what happens when the second stimulus is applied during the relaxation phase of the first one so see here for in this graph we can see that the first stimulus first contraction is in the relaxation phase at that time we are giving the second stimulus so what happens is the second wave will be superposed on the first one so this is called superposition right so you can see that here also the second one second uh, curve is bigger than the first one right so when the second stimulus is during the relaxation phase you will get superposition here also you have to mark the different points and label them neatly next what happens when the second stimulus is during the contraction phase so here you can see that this is the first curve and this is the contraction phase of the first one at that time we are giving the second stimulus this is the point of second stimulus here you can see that the two curves have just summated and uh, given a single curve so this is known as summation 
and this occurs when the second stimulus is provided during the contraction phase of the first one okay so that is known as summation now finally what happens when the stimulus is given during the latent period so in the latent period when you apply a stimulus actually no change will occur because the muscle is in a refractory stage so when you draw the graph you have to make sure that the curve will be like the simple muscle curve itself but it will have two point of stimulation one for the first stimulus and the other one for the second stimulus okay so these are the points to remember when you draw these graphs so now we'll just see the questions that can be asked in case of this experiment so the first question is what are the causes of beneficial effect which i've already mentioned there's an increased temperature increased elasticity decreased viscosity decreased ph and also accumulation of calcium next we should know what are the different types of summation so there are basically two types of summation one is a temporal summation as well as a quantal summation so you should know the basics about this summation next is can summation be done for a cardiac muscle so we know that cardiac muscle has got a long refractory period and so this cannot cannot occur unless a second stimulus is provided during the relative refractory period we'll see that in another experiment okay so the next experiment is genesis of tetanus in this experiment there is a small difference in the basic connections in that there is a new instrument here which is known as a vibrating interrupter it is by the help of this vibrating interrupter that we give more stimuli per second for this nerve muscle preparation okay so that is why the graphs in case of genesis of tetanus is much more different when compared to the other graphs so in the first scenario we are giving five stimuli per second so here you can see that you will have each curve separately and after the complete relaxation of the first first one you will have the next curve so another point you have to remember is here you can see that the curves are increasing in size this again is due to the beneficial effect in the next scenario we are giving seven stimuli per second so here also we can see that the next contraction is after the relaxation of the first one so here also there is there are more number, number of waves which are separate and we can also see the beneficial effect right in the third scenario that we are giving 10 stimuli per second so here also we can see that we've got each curve separate the curves are more closer and then we, we can see the beneficial effect then we'll give the stimuli at a rate of 15 stimuli per second now here there's a speciality here you can see that the stimulus is actually occurring during the relaxation period of the first one so that is why we get fusion of these waves and this is known as clonus okay so when the frequency is 15 stimuli per second we get fusion of the curves and that is known as clonus okay so next we'll give the stimuli at the rate of 20 stimuli per second so at that time we can see that here also there is partial fusion of these contractions now when we st stimulate it at a rate of 25 stimuli per second we can see that there is complete fusion of these contractions now this is called the tetanus so th that is why this frequency the 25 stimuli per second is called the critical fusion frequency wherein all the contractions will be fused together now even if we increase the rate more than 25 still we'll get the tetanus and we can also see that the height of the curve has decreased after doing this this set of experiments we then change the electrical connections to faraday current and then take a curve again so here you can see that when using faraday current more frequency is used so naturally the height of the curve is less and you get a fused curve so this is how we'll draw the curves for genesis of tetanus now the questions that can be asked for this are what is critical fusion frequency and how is it calculated so critical fusion frequency is a minimum frequency at which a muscle can be tetanized and it is calculated as 1 by contraction period so for this in frost gastrocnemius muscle we know that the contraction period is 0.04 seconds so when we apply this formula we can see that the critical fusion frequency is 25 per second that is why in our curve when the frequency of stimuli was 25 we got tetanus right the other questions that can be asked are what are the factors affecting tetanization so the first factor is the type of the muscle so we know that fast acting muscles like that of eye muscles are difficult to be tetanized while slow muscles like the posture regulating muscles are tetanized easily 
so th that is the advantage of these posture regulating muscles because they are tetanized easily so the tension developed in these muscles will be more so that is one advantage of tetanization the next factor is temperature see at low temperature the muscle is slow acting so tetanization is easy and at high temperature it will be difficult next factor is fatigue when a muscle is fatigued the contraction is slow so the muscle can easily be tetanized so remember whenever the contraction is slow the tetanization will be easy okay now the next factor is the effect of load so here again when there is load the contractions become slow so tetanization will be easy so these are the factors that affect tetanization now another question that can be asked is can cardiac muscle be tetanized See, tetanus is not possible in cardiac muscle because the contraction period and early part of relaxation period are absolutely refractory. So that is why even if we give a stimulus, it will not respond to it. So that is why cardiac muscle cannot be tetanized. So in this video, we have discussed the simple muscle curve, then the effect of two successive stimuli, wherein we talked about the beneficial effect, the superposition and summation, and then we also talked about the genesis of tetanus. So I hope these uh, graphs are clear to you. Thank you.